When I first started my content creation business, I was only shooting my footage on a mirrorless camera. But now with short form video increasing in popularity and the platforms favoring short form video more, I am getting increasing requests to basically do things phone first. And that is why in today's video, we are going to be talking about the settings that you need to shoot high quality video on your phone, the anatomy of an engaging Instagram reel. So the structure that you need to have to actually get views. And finally, how I actually go out into the field and apply that structure to making an Instagram reel concept. At the end, we'll be talking about the two platform recommendations that I use to edit those videos. With that, let's jump on into it. Welcome to today's video. If you're new here, my name is Brock Wonder. And on this channel, we talk about how to live a more creative, productive, and impactful life. My role has really changed in my own business and the work that I'm currently doing and has really turned into more of a social media strategist role. And so it's really this nice hybrid of content creation and social media strategy. So I'm very excited to have this video kind of kick off the social media series or the creative tutorial series, we can call it, on how we can learn the basics of engaging content creation of the best practices of social media, and then how you can leverage what we talk about in these videos and apply it to your own brands. Now, at the beginning of this video, I alluded to the fact that I was doing a lot of work with mirrorless cameras, yet the increasing requests to shoot things on iPhones has definitely been building over the last year. And personally, Personally, I can see why. Not only do the platforms actually push social videos more when they are shot on a phone, but audiences enjoy seeing phone footage more because it appears raw and more authentic. A lot of times you might be running into the problem that your video is posted to Instagram Reels or TikTok or whatever, and it gets compressed. And that is because the settings that we are shooting with on our phones are not optimized to be processed by the social media platforms themselves. You have to imagine millions of people are sending in short form videos every every day. And so they are trying to make the file sizes as small as possible because these files have to go somewhere. And so that's kind of the thing we have to have in the back of our minds. And we need to optimize our footage to basically match their requirements. So let's jump into the camera settings that we need in order to optimize our footage to look its best. Now you might think that because you're shooting in 4K, it should be fine, but you actually need to do this instead. Number one is to switch off HDR mode, switch off cinematic mode, and turn off your ProRes mode. These settings can be found in your settings app underneath camera. Part two is to either shoot at 1080p 30 FPS or 4K 60 FPS. This will provide you with the most consistent results when you take your footage and upload it back to Instagram Reels or TikTok. Now I have had a lot of experience shooting at 4K 24 FPS, and for whatever reason, it does provide inconsistent results. My honest recommendation is to shoot everything at 4K, don't shoot at 1080p. This is a problem that Instagram's probably gonna fix in the next couple months, given that everybody's shooting 4K right now, and if we want to keep our footage to future-proof it, shooting at 4K only makes sense to have the best output possible. Now, Part three of all of this is to make sure you're shooting all of your footage compressed and not uncompressed. Uncompressed video is giving the social media platforms more data than they actually need. So they're gonna size it down and that's how you end up getting blurry footage. Part four is to shoot your footage more slowly and don't include too many frames. The more frames that exist in the video footage that your subject is included in, the more information you're giving Instagram. And then five is to try finding a 4K filter that works for you. There are are a ton of different Instagram filters that exist on the platform. And personally, I found a couple that work for me. What I would say is you're more likely to increase the quality of your output by shooting in environments that have higher light and then moving slowly in them and then shooting at 4K 24 frames per second. All right, now we are going to talk about how to structure a reel for engagement. Now, it is very simple to think that a lot of reels might just follow like making a clip, posting it and it randomly going viral, but I can guarantee to you that every reel that gets a lot of views follows specific principles on formatting. In the first zero to two seconds, you need to establish what is called a hook. Studies are showing that people's attention spans are getting shorter and shorter. In that instance, you need to establish what your video is about so that people can make the decision to watch it. The second thing you need to do in the next two to 25 seconds of the video is where you need to deliver the value that you promised in the beginning. So let's say it's three camera tips to take better photos in the next two to 25 seconds, 
you need to establish what those three tips are. In the last five seconds of your video, and I say last five seconds because technically the middle of your video could be as long as you want it to, or you want to establish your call to action. What do you want people to actually do as a result of watching your video? All right, now we are going to go on to making an Instagram reel. And in this example, we are going to head down to TD Towers in Toronto, and I'm going to show you an example of a photography reel because inevitably that is what my platform is about. I share a lot of my street photography, even though now I'm doing a lot of social media strategy work. And so that is the essence of the video that we are going to be doing. The concept I had in mind is that I have the holy trinity of lenses. I have the 16 to 35 f2.8, the 24 to 70 f2.8, and the 70 to 200 f2.8. And what I think would be cool is what I love about this location is that when you look up to the sky, it actually is probably one of the most iconic lookups in Toronto, if not the second most iconic photo before they got rid of the CN Tower in between the TD Towers. No idea who thought that was a good idea, but the reality is, is we need to follow the principles I just mentioned to make the engaging video. Number one is the hook, which is how do these three different lenses impact your ability to take a lookup shot? Now people are more inclined to figure out what I'm gonna show. The second part of the video is delivering on the promise of how it impacts my photos, which I basically show me taking the photos and then putting the photo up on the screen. And that is essentially what the impact is, is people can make a decision like, oh, that 16 mil actually looks really cool versus the telephoto. I don't need detail shots. So there's some value in there for people that haven't had the experience of using these three lenses in the past. And so in the last instance of this video, I put me basically saying which lens is your favorite, which translates back to me saying comparing these three lenses. And so it continues through. And again, that's just like a nice little thing that I like to do instead of saying like and follow for more camera tips, which to me just seems very transactional. All right, the final part that we need to mention is how to edit the videos. And personally, this is something I'm going to leave up to you. But generally, I use Adobe Premiere Rush. If I edit these videos on my phone, if I need to edit these videos on Final Cut because I have a lot more files that I need to work with. Maybe the file structure is more complex. Maybe I want to add transcriptions that are not the text on screen. I'll put them into Final Cut, clip them all there, and then make the reel. Inevitably though, there are a ton of different options for actually making short form video on your phone. And it's really up to you to figure out which ones you like, but those are my two that I go to pretty much all of the time. And in short, that is a fundamentals video on how to make engaging Instagram reels. If you found this video useful, please leave a comment and a like down below. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you dislike, send me a DM on Instagram if you have any more questions. And of course, send me requests on tutorials that you want to see in the future. But I have a few in store going more in depth on social media strategy, Instagram reels, short form video, and just the overall how can we use social media to share our lives, given that this channel is about how to live a more creative, productive and impactful life. We have to know how to share that if we want to leverage social media. So I'm excited for that. And I will see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching.